Hey homies, welcome to the Marvel Snap Beginner's Guide. Basically what I'm going to do in this video is kind of go over the basic card archetypes. The, again, go over the basic concept of the game, just kind of like the tutorial does. Go over the turn order and order of operations. And I'm going to play one game to kind of explain my thought process and hopefully give you kind of some of the basics to help you climb up to those higher ranks. Diamond plus Vibranium, all that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and jump into the uh, card archetypes to kind of go over again what the main cards will do for you all when you are building your decks or you're playing those standard meta decks. So obviously there are five basic uh, card archetypes. You have on reveal, which is when you play the card and it's flipped over, it does an ability. Then you have ongoing, which means once the card is played and revealed, there's an effect that happens throughout the entire game unless it's disabled or something like that. And you have discard. There's a few cards in there that will discard a card once you play it. Usually it's an on reveal ability that discards a card or there's an ongoing ability that when you discard a certain card, it gets a buff of some kind. So pretty self-explanatory, it's discarding cards. Then you have destroy, which is simply what it says. It destroys another card or destroys lots of different cards. Uh, and that one can have a lot of really fun card deck archetypes to kind of trick your opponent into doing things and you destroy it. And the final one is move, which again, pretty self-explanatory. It moves a card from one location to another location. So again, those are the five main abilities you have. And then obviously you have the cards that have no abilities, which are just cards. Think of the Hulk, think of Cyclops, things like that. So now that we know the basic card archetypes that we can play, let's go over a quick rundown of a deck that I'll kind of be showcasing to you all to kind of give you a rundown of how the game operates. So obviously each deck can be built of 12 different cards and each game is six turns. And again, so during those six turns, you can play however many cards you have the energy allowed to. So you start with one energy, turn two, you get two, turn three, you get three, so on and so forth. Turn six, you have six energy to play. So every card has an energy, which is represented by the blue orb and a power, which is represented by the orange, uh, it's bigger than a hexagon, whatever that uh, that is. Uh, so the orange is your power, the blue is the energy cost to play. So the goal of the game is to win two locations out of the three that are present in each and every game. So with that said, let's jump into a game and I'll kind of walk you through my thought process as we kind of go. So you'll know exactly uh, some, some objectives of how to win each game. So as a reminder, each and every game, the three locations will shift or change between games. So you'll never have the same game twice in a row. So the first uh, location that we have is the Isle of Silence, which means ongoing effects are disabled here. So again, ongoing. Ongoing, if you have three other cards here, plus three power. So Ant-Man, if played here, will not get his boost. So I'm probably gonna hold off on playing him there, but we might play Hawkeye here. Hawkeye isn't a reveal card. So I played my one cost here. He played his one cost over here. So this card, once it's in your hand, you can see unrevealed locations. So he actually knows what these two cards are going to be, which can give him a big advantage. So on this one, again, if you play a card here next turn, plus two power. So I probably should play a card here of some kind. Since I have a two mana card, I'll go ahead and play it. Star Lord gets a boost if your opponent plays a card there, which unfortunately he doesn't, which is no big deal. We'll still get the boost to our Hawkeye. Shuri's Lab is the middle one, and it's when you play a card here, double its power. So pretty powerful a location. And then Avengers Compound on turn five, all cards must be played here. So make sure you're aware going into turn five what you're gonna do here on that. So he doubled his power here. I'm gonna go ahead and play my Groot here. Guarantee six, if I would've gotten the proc, I would've gotten a lot more, but I don't, but at least I'm still strong here okay so remember turn five i have to play a card here so i want to kind of look out for that so what i could do is enchantress removes uh, all abilities from ongoing effects so i think i can remove his ability we'll see what this actually does it may be terrible but we'll, we'll kind of check white queen on reveal draw a copy of the highest card in your opponent's deck so he's going to get a white tiger here yeah, that's kind of what I thought. I didn't think it was actually going to be beneficial to me to play there. But that's okay. On turn five, all cards must be played here. So we're going to play good old white tiger, which gives me a seven, seven strength tiger at another location. Perfect. So right now we are playing for one cube. So if I'm like, I'm not going to win this, I can retreat. I only lose one cube towards my rank. If I think 
if I'm unsure, I can play it out and I'm only going to lose two cubes if I lose, but I'll gain two if I win. Now he snapped, which doubles the amount of cubes we can, we can have. So he must be feeling pretty good about it. So what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to Odin to get another 7-7 seven, seven somewhere in the hopes that I win one of these two. Okay, so he's won this. So as long as my 7 tiger goes over here, I win. We'll see what happens here. And we got it. Now, so if you look at it, even though he has a much higher power than any of my other powers, I've won two of the locations. So it doesn't even matter if I only won by one and one here and he won by 60 here, I still win the game because I won two locations. So that's the quick rundown. Hope you all enjoyed. If you have any questions regarding cards or decks, please let me know in the comments below and I'd love to answer those for you. Uh, obviously, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. It just helps, helps me get it out to more people, all that fun stuff. What you can be expecting in the next few weeks is a deck building video, just kind of going over the basics of how to uh, construct a deck that's going to be meaningful and impactful while you play. And then some gameplay video tutorials of different deck archetypes so you can kind of see what your thought process should be as you're playing those decks. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Don't forget when you're uh, grocery shopping to leave those grocery carts where they belong. Just makes everyone's life easier. Adios. Have a great day.